Hi. Hi. Uh, hey, uh, my name is... Uh, oh, thank you so much. Okay, uh, my name is Joseph Go. Uh, actually, I'm a, uh, myself, I'm actually a full-time uh, interior and architecture photographer. Okay, uh, I started as uh, a wedding photographer and only uh, switched my career, do a career switch last year. Uh, currently, uh, I'm actually only specialized in interior architecture. I don't do anything else. Okay, uh, reason uh, why wedding I'm not doing, you know, everybody who owns a DSLR camera is a wedding photographer now, nowadays. And uh, even from overseas, people are coming here and, you know, doing sidelines to do photography. You know, even the workers, now they use DSLR to earn money as well. Yeah, so it's very competitive currently in the market. And I do not want to give discount, to be frank. Okay, so my price is always fixed, no discount. Yeah, so I, I got to lower myself, I rather not to be. Yeah, so I, I actually switched to interior architecture and I'm doing very good when I do this. <laughs> okay, uh, myself, I uh, have this page, Joseph Go Photography, that's uh, where I share all my uh, photography stuff. And uh, currently a reviewer for EC, uh, for those who have not heard about EC, currently a lot of uh, professional photographers even overseas, everybody are switching. You know, they are, they are trying to switch to DC, uh, this brand. Yeah, because of the result that is proven, in a, uh, currently uh, being proven. And you look at the brand, it looks like a uh, Japanese brand, you know, but actually no, they are from China. Okay, but the result is, is fantastic, okay? Uh, okay, uh, myself, uh, I've been shooting that means uh, photography, a little bit of my background. Uh, started for about seven years as a photographer. I started my first camera as 1000D. Okay, so I started with uh, same as you guys as well. Uh, that was about seven years ago. And been teaching uh, in uh, this Canon Imaging Academy for the last six, seven years. Yeah, six, seven years. Okay, six, six years plus. Okay. Uh, and, uh, my son is the ambassador for Garden by the Bay and Marina Bay Singapore. So um, the good thing about being an ambassador is that I get to shoot in very special location, special rooftop. Nobody can access except me, one person there standing at the rooftop doing all my shoots. Yeah, so this is quite enjoyable to do all this. But nowadays I seldom do because of my time. I don't have time to sleep now. Okay, because I only sleep two, three hours a day, every day. Okay, because of my work. Okay, and uh, I'm actually. Also said for the Master Photos Association, Royal, Phot uh, Royal Photographic Society as well, and uh, WPBI International. This title is actually uh, won from competition wedding. All the you know the first three places they give you points. Only the top three they give you points. So uh, from the license ship, I actually promoted to associate in less than one year. Yeah, that's how I progress in wedding industry. Okay, uh, my son is the winner of Hasselblad Master 2014. If you have heard about the brand Hasselblad, the camera. Okay, uh, Hasselblad Master is only, there's only 12 Master every two years. 12 Master. Okay, so I'm actually one of them. Very lucky to be one of them. And Singapore is the second person to be a Hasselblad Master. One of them is 11 years ago. So I'm the second one. After the new flip and digital. Yeah, so we, we, we two different Masters. Okay, and uh, I'm also supported by Gizzo, and so I'm using this Gizzo tripod here, which is very sturdy. I've been using this, uh, no turning back after you use this. You don't look at other brands anymore, okay, because it's really, really stable. After you tighten this forehead, you will not move at all, okay, because I have used so many brands of tripod before, okay, all my images will somehow look soft. I don't know whether you will look at your images sometimes. How come you will you'll tell yourself, I thought it's sharp, how come it's blur? You know, so you think back because mainly the main cost is your tripod. Okay, because your camera is so heavy, you are spending so much money on your camera but your tripod is so flimsy. Yeah, so at the end of the day, your tripod starts to move, which you don't, do. you don't know because it's only a slight move. Okay, so after I've used this, yeah, no turning back. Guarantee no turning back. Okay, so uh, I'm using, uh, uh, also supported by Zeiss. Uh, I'm actually given some lenses to use as well, which is not here today. And, uh, okay, this is the filters, okay. So these are some of my awards that I have. Uh, to date, I have won about 130 awards and still ongoing. Uh, I started photography in, back in uh, 2009 uh, or 2010, around that time, and I started my first competition in 2011. 
Uh, two zero one one, yeah, correct, around, around there. And uh, yeah, it's been like all the way, okay. And wedding, these are some of the wedding awards. And one quite a number of first place, second place, you know, and one pictures can be these seven, eight international awards, that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's okay. So it's a really history for this, okay. <laughs> Okay, so for myself in Canon Imaging Academy, I do training for like uh, micro photography, Photoshop editing, basic one. I do intermediate fireworks editing as well. That means you shoot and do editing, how to do beautiful fireworks shop. And I also do like fireworks photography. And the latest uh, workshop that I have is intermediate nature photography, which covers sunrise, sunset, macro insects, macro flower, which everything all in one. Okay, because a lot of people say, I want to attend this, I want to attend that, but no time. So I make it all, you know, including myself, I have no time. So I make everything together. So we learn everything in one shot. Okay, and also a creative photography series which covers space, building, structures, light and shadow. You, you work with me, you see light, shadow, and architectural stuff. Yeah, this is also one of the very new courses that I run. Okay, so uh, introduction of use of filters. Okay, uh, myself been using uh, Lee Big Stopper throughout my past six years, I guess, or seven years of my photography journey. I got one of my my first filter uh, is actually the Lee. Currently, this is actually a Lee Big Stopper and stop, um, which uh, I've been using throughout, and no other filter. I don't touch any other filters until uh, last, earlier this year. I went for a trip with my uh, Ken. Uh, Canon instructor, one of them, where he, he was using a DC filters. So I was like using it, which I'm going to share with you the amazing result of the filter. Okay. Okay, my gears that I use currently, I'm still using the Mark 3. I'm not using the Mark 4 uh, because I'm still thinking what to upgrade. Okay, because of my work, I have second thoughts about other brands as well. Okay, so although I'm actually a Canon staff, uh, I'm not part time staff. Time. I'm allowed to use other brand uh, subtly. Okay. So uh, I'm using 5D Mark III. 5D2 is my backup bodies. I also use 7D. Sometimes I use 7D is because of uh, you know the crop factor. Uh, sometimes when you travel overseas, certain sometimes your lens is like you know not long enough, you know the, the, the distance is not long enough. So I have this 7D which I have a 1.6 crop factor, which is you know it's an advantage on top of my full frame. Okay, so I am using some, this is my backup as well. So when you travel, I will use three cameras. I will bring three cameras. Okay, it's going to be very heavy, but yeah, I carry three cameras. I carry, I used to carry a 17 inch laptop with me as well, and all my lenses, all these lenses, but now I stop. Now I use trolley, I don't carry it anymore. Cannot take it, back injury. Okay, so I have to take care of back so that you can do beautiful photograph. Okay, so this is very important. Okay, so uh, 1635 Mark II, uh, which I'm using currently, this is the Mark II here, uh, been serving me very well. Uh, I'm using the 2470, 7200. Uh, 7200, I don't own one, but this is actually uh, from my brother-in-law, which I use. Anytime I want to use, I can get it from him, because he also do photography. Okay, and uh, I'm using a 17mm tube shift, because of my career, I'm doing, doing interior architecture. Tube shift is very important for me. And when you use tube sheet uh, for landscape, you, when you use a normal lens like this kind of lens, you feel weird, awkward. Okay, because you start to tilt your camera upward, downward. Which uh, tube sheet, you, you do not need to tilt up, down. You just have a straight horizon and you shift. You shift up, down on the lenses to the, to the body, which I have it here with me. Okay, uh, you can always move the center column at, at the center side. You can just move. You can see the lens can break to half, something like that. Yeah, so it, it can shift tip shift without shifting my horizon. Yeah, so everything, what I shoot, everything will be straight. Okay, so, uh, but because uh, for these uh, filters, I only have a holder for 1635 and my other lens. I do not have a holder for 70mm yet because uh, they didn't have it, but I have not go, have time to go and get, get from them. So I, I have not used it on my uh, tip shift. Because the tip shift is slightly different. Okay. So the normal filter you can't fit. You need to use a very customized filter just to fit this, this thing in. Okay.
Okay, uh, 100, 400 is also very, very important for uh, landscape photography because when you go travel all the way to like for example China, you go to like so many countries, you you travel up, you know, you bring all your gear up all the way, then you realize wow, your lens cannot even reach the one that you want to shoot. So uh, 400, 100, 400 is actually quite a safe one. It's quite a very, uh, quite a good uh, lenses to use for traveling. Okay, for especially uh, landscape photography. Because sometimes you really need to zoom in to see, see things. Like Italy, if you go to Italy, Tuscany, everybody say beautiful. You go there, you look at the, the, the landscape, where? Shoot, what? What is here? Like, everything looks so, like, so white, uh, quite apart, you know, all the things that you want to shoot. So you need to zoom in to have amazing photograph. So yeah, zoom is very important. So you have to do some work, do some research before you, you travel, especially to those places you need to hike up carry all your gears up, then you realize that all your gears cannot use. Okay. Especially uh, recently I've been to Korea a few months back. Uh, I did not do my research. I was thinking to do architecture. So I bring my two sheet, one only as I bring them. Then I realized that I went to the Rainbow Bridge if you have been there. Rainbow Bridge is actually a uh, quite iconic shop. I bring them and I realized wow the bridge is so far but everybody stands so far away, a few hundred meters away. I said wow die cannot shoot. So I tried to put it in, I tried to put my tripod set up everything, I realized that I cannot even shoot. When I shoot, like, it's only like 1 cm, 2 cm in my wife. My, the rainbow is so, so miserable. So you know, I learned my lesson, must bring more lenses. Okay, not only one. Okay, uh, you have to use, when shooting landscape, okay, no matter how you have to invest in a trigger. Okay, because a lot of uh, my participants, my, uh, my student, when they, try, they do landscape, they say, I don't have a trigger, can I do? I say, no, you must have a trigger. It's very, very important. You can go and grab those wired one. It's good enough. You do not need to buy wireless unless you are like me, you know, because I, I like wireless, because I can talk to my friend and I can continue shooting. I can, I can talk to you and I can shoot from here. You see, I can shoot, it's wireless. And I can go up to 50 meter, but usually I don't do 50 meter away. If I go 50 meter away, I come back, gone. My camera, hey, Papa, cannot shoot. Nothing, where well, my camera gone. Someone took it. Okay, so yeah. So usually I will uh, prefer to have wireless because I teach and I can shoot at the same time. Okay. Uh, and also uh, for this brand, this is actually a Korean brand, uh, SMDV. Okay, it's also uh, carried by the you know the DC distributor. He, this brand is actually a Korean brand where you can use as a wireless and you can use as a wire. So two in one. Okay. So it's very good because what happens is that uh, when I was like shooting my commercial job. Then I realized that how come my trigger failed? I was like clicking and for oh, low back. I don't have battery. So luckily I, I remember I have this you no know, I which I still can use this way. Okay, so I, I managed to still have uh, able to use my trigger. Okay, and um, sturdy tripod is important, okay as well. Uh, so currently I'm using this model 3532, that means it's a three section tripod. Okay, if you want to buy a tripod, try to get something around your eye level. Don't get things so small uh, tripod because I have come as well, always get a tripod which is around this height. Then I say, okay, okay. Then the next day, the next lesson that they bring, they bring the small tripod like this. Then, then after that, I said, wow, then how? Then he said, then we go to Marina Bay, uh, got really right. He said, how, uh, how I should? Uh? I said, yeah, how? You know, our Singapore really so high, you get so small, uh, then how? So he expanded this his, his, his center column and so flimsy, the whole thing keeps shaking. Yeah, everything is blurred. So yeah, why why spend that money? You know, go and get one really good tripod. That's it. You do not need to spend so much money because after you buy, I have students who say today I buy, tomorrow we regret. Yeah, because the result shows. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as mentioned, invest in sturdy and taller tripod is very important. Use appropriate lenses uh, that's suitable to the scene is very important as well. Uh, use filters if you have because filters does give a very interesting look in your shop. Besides the normal shooting, you know, everybody can do the normal shoot. Okay, using filters can improve the looks of your photo. Yeah, it's definitely good. It's, you, uh, later I'm going to show further. Okay, so uh, for filters, try to use something like ND or GND or those power riser. You can do a lot of research. They, they actually have, you can find uh, a lot of information through internet. Okay, even you can type easy filter, who is using what? There's a lot of more meaning for offer than using the landscape for offer. A lot of them they give very good review. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. For trigger, do not buy the infrared trigger, which is 
trigger this way. Because infrared, sometimes you cannot sense because the sensor is always in front. So what happens is that some students are less willing on how to go in front, so they have to shoot like that. Yeah, a bit, a bit, I mean, it's, yeah, a bit silly in a way. So you have to like shoot like that, and then come here, you shoot like that, you know, that kind of thing. So at now, the trigger, though it's cheap, yeah, it's very cheap, the infrared, but then again, it doesn't work, doesn't serve the purpose. Okay. So for me, usually the, my setting uh, for um, doing uh, travel or uh, landscape, I usually use aperture priority. I mean, it's the most easiest, and you need not need to worry a lot about setting. Because aperture part, is, uh, uh, for if you are long enough, aperture party, you only worry about you know uh, shutter speed most of the time. Okay, but if you are mounting landscape, you definitely use tripod, so you don't need to worry about shutter speed as well. So this one thing less to think of. So usually you, I only think about okay anything that is more than in, in, let's say you are using an aperture party, then you realize that after you click, you half click, then your your this uh, shutter speed is start to blink at thirty, it start to blink. When you start to blink, meaning not enough light, low light, you need more than 30 seconds. Then from there onward, I will start to switch to bar mode. If not, I will switch to, I will only switch in AV, AV, aperture priority. Most of the time, I should say, almost all my, all my lens capable are shoot with only uh, AV mode. Okay? And I shoot at ISO 100 or 200 or something like ISO 50 just to keep my noise as low as possible because after you process the images there are some, somehow there, are, there is noise in the, in the images as well okay, you will start to see some noise so of course the lower you can shoot uh, the lower you can shoot that means you have trying to reduce the noise but then again you definitely will still see some noise after you process okay, unless you are using those very um, good brand where they can have noise control which is very good noise control, yeah. For me, finding trees still have noise. Somehow. Yeah, no matter how. At 50 ISO still have noise. After I process. Okay. Uh, I should uh, 100 ISO, 200, okay, F8, 11, or 16. These are the three sweet spots for me, uh, for, my, for the lenses as well, for Canon. Most, most of the Canon. Okay, uh, the lenses. So, okay, in most cases, I used to only shoot F8, nothing else. Throughout. F8. To me, F8 is good enough. I look at corner to corner, everything looks good, looks fine. Okay, so but because of my work nowadays, because I'm doing commercial job, I cannot, you know, after F, I should act I keep thinking, you know, I have whether my photo is sharp enough. So now I actually switch to F16 as well. So now I will shoot F16. If not enough light, for example, you 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 call for like 30 seconds or more, they want you know you increase to bump mode. So now instead of increasing to bump mode, I will switch to F11 or F. It straight away. Then you will not ask for 30 seconds, you know, that kind of low light condition. Okay, so this is the only thing that I, I switch because I try to minimize all these uh, setting in the lenses. Okay, I only shoot in uh, auto white balance in all my photographs, auto white balance. Because I, I shoot in RAW, in RAW you can actually adjust whatever white balance you want. Layer part. Okay, uh, I used to shoot uh, daylight, sunlight, all this. Then after that, I realized that certain color cast is very difficult to remove after the camera actually generated the color cast. You know, sometimes you try to remove, you know, especially when you're new, you know, uh, you're not very familiar with Photoshop or Lightroom. Then you have your problem removing those color cast. You know, where you, you thought that it, is, it looked nice, but after you put it together, hey, how come this color I don't like? But it's, then you want to try to reduce, instead of reducing, you're reducing everything. You know, if you reduce, uh, let's say you reduce red, every, anything that is red in your pictures will be gone. Okay, so that, that is a very big setback. Okay. Uh, so if you are not very sure about RAW, I would recommend you to shoot the, uh, JPEG plus, plus RAW. Okay, because uh, one day you will definitely need to learn processing. It's very, very important. None of my pictures uh, are unprocessed and I post no. I don't post those RAW images. Okay. Uh, I, I will process every single one. Although a very simple photograph, I will process. Okay, so I shoot in bracketing. Bracketing is very important because I do a lot of Photoshop expansion. I actually need all the uh, this uh, metering at zero because usually the camera will tell you it's zero. You shoot at the meter at zero to get your exposure right. But for me, I'm not doing uh, HDR. Okay, because a lot of people when I tell them bracketing, oh, you mean HDR? No, it's not HDR because I'm doing digital blending. So I blend every single images my own and I actually uh, light up everything on my own, 
and also uh, trying to recover as much detail as possible in my shop. Okay, nothing is underexposed, nothing overexposed in my shop most of the time. You may look at my images, you'll see that everything is nicely exposed. Okay, even the, the street lamp, even the, the house light, every single thing. Okay, yeah, and I will make sure that you will still see detail on the maybe the wall or whichever. Okay, because I have been penalized by one of the judges in overseas when I do a lot of overseas competition. They will tell you that if, okay, this point here, one dot here, meaning overexposed. Okay, so when they say overexposed, meaning minus 20 point, yeah, because of that. Okay, so when I re edit the images, on the same images, I have won a lot for the images. So sometimes, you know, you just need to take care of all these overexposed and underexposed, you will somehow your images will be like, uh, will mean something, like, I mean, if you, you send for international awards. Okay, and mirror art is also one of the things that a lot of people ask me. Do I need to use mirror art for my images to shoot? Okay, uh, of course mirror art is good, but you have to go into your menu to set mirror art. Okay, uh, when I started the Ovi, uh, I read about mirror art, so I actually set my camera to mirror art. Then one day I wanted to shoot uh, one event, uh, I take out my camera and I start to shoot. Then I say, hey, how come uh, my camera hang? How come no sound? I keep clicking and keeping no sound. I thought my camera spoiled. So actually, I, the mirror art is not off. So and now I have to like, do so much research, at the end of the day, I, I remember I actually set mirror up. So I went back to check on, I, I, I actually off the mirror up, then I realized, oh, my camera actually is okay. Okay, so now instead of using mirror up, you can also use live view. Live view is also one of the, yeah, when you, when you, when you press mirror up, it has an open up, then it's actually uh, it's considered mirror up as well. So you can just use live view to serve its purpose. So when you, when you click, it's actually a silent mode shooting. Okay, so when you, when you shoot, okay, so, okay, I'll switch to, okay, so when you switch, okay, uh, then you see silent, so, because it's mirror up, okay, so at the same time, uh, if you hear the beeping sound, the, 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 the two second timer is also one of the things that I will turn on, the two second timer, because when you click two second timer, when you click bracketing, you auto bracket straight away, you will shoot seven times on its own. Okay, without me taking one, two, three, four, very Thompson, right? So with the two seconds, it actually auto shoot seven shot at one go. Okay, so this is actually uh, one of the tricks that you should be uh, to know. Okay, so this is actually the trigger that I mentioned uh, that I'm using 16 channel up to 50 meter. Okay, which uh, not recommended at uh, 50 meter. Again, okay, uh, usually the near one, uh, you can see, make sure you can still see the camera. Okay, uh, especially the burden. All this very far. Like, they like, put the camera there, they go very far, and they trigger. Okay, so that's that's a it's very good for birders as well. Okay, uh, filters, Nisi filters that I'm using. Okay, a lot of people are asking me uh, whether to buy a uh, slot in or to buy a ring, the ring step up, step down, all those. You see, so uh, for me, I prefer to use this slot. Okay, because I can just get the ring, get the different size of ring, which Nisi actually has come with it, it actually has uh, three, four rings, I think three or four rings, which I have it here, it comes with it when you buy a set, so uh, you can use it for other lenses sizes, which you need not need to worry, so I just need to just use a folder and hook on on other lenses and I still can use, okay, but if you are using a screw one, you have to go and like, buy a step up, step down, your ring is like small, you have to buy a step up, then you know, you might have better thing, you know, at the end of the day, the corner, yeah, then, uh, so you have to decide what you want. If you want cost effective or cost one time investment, that's it. You use for all your lenses. Okay, so you just need to get this ring. I think this ring is, is not expensive, uh, the ring. How much is the remote? The remote, uh, 100, uh, eh, no, less than 100 dollars. Like, or I can't remember. I, I think so, around there. Maybe it's 80 plus or something. I, I'm not too sure. You have to check me. Uh, later, I have one. For, for the retailer, they also carry uh, the, this trigger, okay, uh, where you can call them and ask them about this, okay, about this uh, SMDB, okay, they, they actually, uh, they will sell it, okay. Uh, this filter system? Uh, later I'll give you the, where to buy the phone. So it's from Nisi, this is all the Nisi filters that we're using. Okay, so for myself, currently I'm holding on um, soft filters, Okay, I'm using this, uh, this is actually a 0.9, 3 stop soft. Okay, uh, they actually have this reverse. Reverse is something very new. 
in the market currently. Uh, I'm not wrong so far, I think Nisi is the, the pioneer that is doing all these reverse. Okay, later I explain further what does all these do. Okay, this is actually a hard okay, I don't recommend you to get hard if you are still in Singapore. Because you need a clean horizon to use this. Okay, but this is because it's free for me, so I just keep uh, I was not really using it. Uh, okay. So uh, I have this six stop. Okay, if you are those uh, you are not too sure about end stop filters, you are afraid of taking long exposure. Okay, six stop can is a good start for six. Okay, but the data I'm gonna show you the result of six stop uh, I prefer to use the tank because I, I, I love to do longer exposure. Okay, uh, there's a difference. Okay, so another I use mostly my tank stop. Okay, the tank stop you cannot see my face, is it? Tank stop is because it's all black. Okay, everything black. So you need a really long exposure to, to shoot that. Okay, so for for this uh, uh, okay, as mentioned, there's two types: uh, the round or the square. Okay, uh, so um, this is the system that I'm using: tank stop, three stop. Okay, uh, ten stop, six stop. Okay, so the, the uh, these are the filters I'm using, and this is actually the holder. The V five is actually the latest holder, the V five, where they have uh, later I'll show you another pictures where they have a small knob. Okay, uh, when you buy a set, right, they also come with uh, this polarizer. Come with it in the box. Polarizer, if you're going to buy the loan itself, it costs you a couple hundred dollars as well. So it actually come with it, and the polarizer is actually to screw on top of. This holder is amazing because you just screw it on and you can just uh, there's a small knob and just turn from there. Okay, you do not need to turn it manually, so it's, it's quite good. Okay. okay, so it comes with uh, 82 adapter, uh, 77, uh, 70, 80, uh, 72, 67, and, and other big size as well. Other brand they also have, that means not only Canon, they have other brand or numbers or whatever brand you can, make, you can, you can think of, they will have it somehow. Okay, if they don't have it, you can ask them in there to make for you. Again, some, because sometimes they will just you know, take an effort to make it for you. So, yeah? And it's also come with a holder like this, leather case holder. So you, you know, you can carry for everything. Filters, it come with a filter holder as well. So everything comes come with me. Okay, when you get it. Okay, so. Okay, as mentioned, there are actually a small This is actually for you to put in the when when this is actually for you to put in the filters. It is very easy to stop. Okay, so you just put it in, it will be there. Just pull in and out. Okay. And also there's actually a, a, a this a small knob at the side. Okay, where you can turn. And also uh, you can stop up to three filters at one go. A lot of brands can only stop two. Uh, most, of, most of the brand you can only stop two, but this you can stop three. On top of that, polarizer, so you can put four in total. You can stack up to four without vanity. Okay, because we tested. Okay, okay so uh, why choose DC? Okay, because these, uh, they are using a nano coating. It's actually one of the uh, very uh, good coating for uh, filters. They are using glass. They are not using the, the you know, the those resin. A lot of people are using resin plastic. This is glass. So meaning you have to really take care. Don't go put behind, put it aside, okay, then you go and shoot, then you knock something, that's it. Yeah, one of my uh, students actually put it at the side. He squat down, break. The whole thing break. Yeah, because it's glass. This is glass. So you have to really take care. Okay. Uh, and uh, it has a low color class. To me, it's almost like uh, no color class. To me, it's like almost no color class. But uh, we call it low color class to be safe. Okay, uh, low reflection. Okay, where you put side by side with other brand, uh, you can see that DC has actually low reflections. You don't see reflection on the on the filter. Even I put it here, I don't see reflection. Okay, uh, oil resistant, which I don't know why they put the oil resistant there because uh, usually we don't touch oil with our camera. Okay, so it doesn't blend. Uh, Again, yeah, it's because of the coating, I guess. So it as you have a oil resistant. Why, why, why is the oil resistant for? It's actually uh, when the oil touches your filter, it just drip off. It won't stay there. Okay. A lot of brands, uh, if, you, if you realize this, I'm using my big stopper last time. When I shoot waterfall, those waterfall, the wind blow one time, but that's it. I will stay there, the water. It will, never, it will never go off. So for DC, they have a waterproof function as well, so the water will just go off. Drip off, so at least you won't have the water, you know, they should they knock out one patch water, so they take each to clean. So and now I spend a lot of time cleaning the shooting. Right? So uh, this is an advantage, high definition, it's actually an optical glass. 
Okay, I've heard this glass uh, is actually you no know, aeroplane, uh, the, the pilot, you know the glass in front of the pilot, this is actually the glass. Okay, other brands are using the side glass. If they, they if you manage to see some glass, uh, they're using those windows, those passengers glass, that kind of glass. But this is actually the pilot, uh, that's why the quality is better. Okay. Uh, this is actually that they tested, they have tested Apple to Apple, they use different other brand, put together and then they, they tested. So DC is still the sharper. The result is much better. Okay, sometimes when you put filter, a lot of my students tell me, I put filter, my shop total looks softer. Yeah, it does make sense because it's plastic, some of them they are using. Okay, so you have this issue. And this is one of the, one of the uh, waterfall that I mentioned. I shoot these uh, for don't know how many times, just to get it, like more than like, 30-40 times just to get one shot, one shot. Yeah, because a lot of water stays stay there. Okay, so for, for you, uh, let's say if you are shooting landscape, you do not know how to frame your subject, how to frame. Okay, you can use uh, the, the very minimum, the rule of the, something like this, where you can frame anything, anything that falls between the intersect area or within the line, okay, it won't go wrong somehow, the composition won't go wrong. Okay, but of course you have to make sure you frame it correctly also. Let's say the water is from the right, uh, from the left top to the bottom, right? So you have to frame it, you know, where your subject is supposed to be here, okay, coming now. So you lead your, your viewer to look at your photo as a flow. Okay, some, some people that I look at, uh, some of my students, they can shoot, uh, they can shoot without this. Okay, so only here, so flowing down, yes. It doesn't mean it's wrong, but you know, the flow stops. You know, you look at it, it stops, nothing. Yeah, but because the highlight is actually the rainbow. Okay, so your eyes actually leads from the top to the rainbow area. Immediately you look, straight away you will look at the rainbow as well. Okay, so you will have to lead your, your this, uh, the viewers to see things that you, you want them to see. Okay, because sometimes you, when you see some photograph, uh, you look at it, oh, what is trying to show me? I don't know what is the, the, the important points about what you are shooting. So you have to show, shoot the, the important stuff, okay? For me, I would prefer to explore different perspectives. I have actually classified them as uh, the bird view, meaning you shoot from the top, if you can see anything. Usually when I go around, travel, I look around, is there any mountain I can climb? Or any vantage point I can go? I will do some research as well, before I, I will decide whether I want to go or not. Okay, because you need to track up with your heavy gear, not easy. So if the view is good, uh, worth going, then you go. Yeah, because uh, recently I just came back from Italy and uh, I actually tracked with my trolley bag. So you can imagine I carry my trolley bag up all the way. Yeah, luckily it was only one, one time that I carry. Okay, if not then uh, I die. <laughs> Every trip you go, you track, you have to carry, you, you cannot take it. Okay, so that's the only one that which I'm going to show you later. Uh, human view is the most common one. Human eye view because everybody will shoot the same thing. You go travel, everybody put all the tripod on one straight line. Everybody shoot the same thing, so nothing unique. Especially if you go competition like for example Marina Bay, usually every year they will have Marina Bay countdown. Countdowns, okay? So you will see all photographer. Wow, 1,000 photographers across the whole Marina Bay. And everybody submit the same photo. What's so special? You wouldn't win anything on like that. Trust me, very difficult to win unless your photo has like fantastic moment. It's not very good to win. Okay, because I've been doing a lot of judging. When you see those thumbnails, because we don't see big pictures, we see thumbnails. So thumbnail that is like something special that we'll see. Okay, that's the, what the judges will do like, most of the time. Okay, so and then the worm eye will be the very low angle. Try to go low. Okay, you'll be surprised that the, sometimes the result is good. It's really good. Sometimes you can also look for reflections. Really low with reflection. Like, amazing. Some people they don't even see because they're sending the eye view. So you will you'll see it from out. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, I would prefer to go as early as possible. Let's say I'm shooting a 6 a.m. sunrise. I sometimes go there at about 4, I start to go up at 4 a.m. Because sometimes when you go there all the way, you travel all the way to your gear there and realize that, wow, this place renovation. That's how, under construction. That's how, then you got no, nothing, no idea. If you reach there on time, then the sunrise coming out early, then how? You can't show you don't know what to shoot, then anyhow shoot. Yeah, because you are, you are there, you don't know where to go. Yeah, so you just, you just whack. Then go back, nothing, cannot post. Okay, so try to go as early as possible to get a shot. Okay, I will usually go like two hours at least. Guarantee two hours you can sure get, get a good spot somehow. Okay. And also some, uh, after 
after sunset or sunrise, don't immediately kick when the sun is up. Sometimes you know, sometime it will have some special you know, effects coming up from the sky, the colors. Sometimes when I kick up, I, I, you know, a lot of students when they shoot sunset, they shoot already and then they, they start to kick up, nothing really. Especially fire, especially right? They keep it. Suddenly, hey, something came up. They say, ah, yeah, I should be waiting for it. Yeah, then they, they start to regret, yeah, I think I should wait for it. Then sometimes they just set, they just shoot, but not nice at all. Yeah, because you always shifted. Okay, so I would prefer to stay longer. Okay, and a lot of, uh, like these two shots, I uh, also shoot with a 10 stop. At that time, I don't have a DC, so I shoot with a lead. This is actually uh, from a lead big stopper. Okay, so still again, I actually, uh, some colors are man made by myself. Okay, to look real. Okay, these are all uh, things uh, photoshopped in. Because if you are shooting against the sun, it's actually silhouette shot. Okay, your bottom you will not see anything, most of it. Okay, it's black most of the time. Okay, so you need to shoot. That's why I see I shoot bracketing. I have shots that are able to recover from the bottom. Okay, so I have nothing overexposed, nothing underexposed. Yeah? Because you're shooting against the sun, definitely it's back. It's, it's uh, uh, silhouette shot. Okay, this is the same thing as well. When I was shooting uh, with my band stop, halfway I realized this part is black. Black because actually I'm shooting against the light. So definitely black. So if you go in meter here, overexposed. Okay, so you have to shoot in different stages that you are able to blend it in. Okay, besides using filter, of course filter is once one time you shoot it, it doesn't mean you, you stop there. You have to think of what are the things that you can improve in our shot. This is very important because a lot of people just shoot. And they, they just shoot, oh 10 stop is good. I put in 10 stop, I shoot it, then I go, I go back. But they never think back that this is actually silhouette. And how are you going to recover back? Unless you're using those very top brand and they say they can recover like 5, 6 top. If not, then very difficult. Everything will be color noise, noise, everything will be gone. Okay, so you can only use it for very big print at the end of the day. Okay. Okay, so for soft, you have to use it when you do not have a straight horizon, you have to use a soft. Okay, this is very important to soft. Okay. A uh, hard is very difficult to find in Singapore uh, where you get clean horizon, you use the hard for this case. Okay? I've been so many years, I have only tried once hard in Italy. Once. In Italy, it's very nice. Uh, it's clean horizon. Other than that, no. I can't even find anything clean. So it's very clean. My, my, my definition is the cleanest. No fingerprint. Uh. Okay? So reverse is when your sun comes out from the middle of your frame. Okay? If you use a soft, you, I mean, a lot of people have soft. They shoot, then the sun comes out from here. Then how? How are you going to cover? Are you going to pull further down? It's very difficult because if you put a soft, you put a soft, you pull how, how low can you pull? This way, is you can see a line on top. So you can't pull anything lower. So what happens is that we will prefer to use, this is actually a reverse, you can see that the duct is at the middle. Yeah, you cover. So you have to really cover uh, the middle. So the top, uh, if let's say the top, you feel that it's a bit bright. You can stack on the soft on top okay, to cover up, to balance up the exposure. So at least you are well covered from here. Okay, so you stack two. So if I feel that I want more drama, although I already covered the top okay, as a, a, a reverse with a soft from dark to, to, uh, to light, I cover up already. And I feel that I want it more drama, my, my sky to like, travel more. To go more, more silky, you want to create an effect. I step another 10 stop or 6 stop or do it. So you can see that I actually covered everything. Yeah, so I have a 10 stop, I have a, a shot with just a the sun, then I have a, a, a 10 stop across where I have silky top, then at the bottom I can shoot something with the natural without the filter. And I can blend everything together. Yeah, so that is how I usually visualize my shot. Okay, to, to get perfect shot. Okay, so since, uh, it's already cut here, so anyway, I explain further. Okay, so filters is actually this is one example. Most of the time, you shoot directly like that, right? So with the soft, you can at least cover up, yeah, cover up so that you can balance out the exposure. Okay, that's that's how you use it. It is a, just a very basic theory of the filter. Okay, the advantage of using it. Okay, so uh, this. Just a guide uh, where you know when you have a shutter speed of one one thousand, a ten stop you can shoot a, a second. But most of the time in the daytime, if I'm shooting at f sixteen, I can actually shoot at ISO one hundred. I can easily get twenty second with a ten stop. Easily, I can get twenty second. 
minimum I will still have 10, 10 seconds. But most of the time, 20 seconds to 30 seconds in the bright daylight. Okay, so you have an advantage. Instead of shooting the boring kind of uh, boring kind of shot like this, why not make it move? It's more, more dramatic. Yeah, that's movement. I, I love to see movement shot. Okay, soft effect, you no know, movement shot, and it also cut away the harshness of the crowd. You know, sometimes you will have you see that some certain area is blue. But if you have a soft effect, because the cloud will cover all the harshness of the you know, the clouds. Okay, so I prefer to use that. So that's why I love using filters, especially the daytime. Okay, nighttime or anything that is about 7 pm, uh, no, no need to use filter. Anymore. 6.30 all actually is a bit challenging to use uh, a 10 stop especially. Okay, because I have a student who say I use a 10 stop uh, at night. I said, why do you use a 10 stop at night? I asked him. He said, no, I want to create movement. I said, what kind of movement do you want to create at night? He said, then he showed me. I said, where, where is your vantage point? Can you show me? So he take, took a picture because he's an Indonesian. So he took a picture. He said, I took this for my apartment. I look at this picture, everything black. Nothing, even from camera, his phone, nothing, everything black. I said, then why do you use a 10 stop? I said, I thought 10 stop can create movement. I said, yes, but no cloud, nothing. Why do you want to create? So you have to use it smartly, okay? You no need 10 stop for this case. You can straight away shoot from directly without. But anyway, there's nothing. Because I look at the picture, there's nothing in front, not even trees. So it's like, I say, um, forget, don't shoot. Because you don't need to shoot 30 minutes, see nothing. I said, 30 minutes, meaning your, your uh, pictures are a lot of noise. Right? I said, yeah. Is it everything doctor? I said, of course. Okay, so anything that is four or five minutes, I don't shoot filters. I don't even shoot. I don't even bother to shoot. Because the longer you drag, okay, the longer you drag, the more noise your photo will have. Because of the sensor, because the sensor actually heat up. Okay, then there's noise in your shot. Okay, so I don't even bother to shoot. Okay. Okay, so this is actually one example. Uh, this was uh, a level of art. Okay, I did, uh, but when you want to shoot this kind of view, uh, must be very, very careful. Be more vigilant when you go to shoot this kind of shot. Because you will see, because this is actually, there's actually a pavement, uh, so there's actually a rock, a slope going down. So some, one of the support, I was shooting this, uh, halfway, uh, I saw, boom, 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 I don't know what happened. Because uh, I was shooting below, uh, this photographer saw me, he thought that, wow, this is a good view, right? Perception, what I want to shoot also. So he straight away stepped onto the rock, he fell all the way. He dragged his camera all the way, all the way. I think the camera looked quite new. He dragged all the way down. Then he keep it. Then after he came, he go. Yeah, he, he like, wow. He said, Pai say, Pai say, he go. Yeah, he, he quickly, finally, he go away. I see him bleeding like anyway. Yeah, be more busy because there's a lot of gates, especially all this kind of area. So be careful where you shoot because I have a rope to help me go down. And he never see the rope there. Someone planted a rope there, but you know, I go down from. Then I put my camera on top first, I go down first before I take my camera. This is the right way. Don't carry your gears together, get go down without repelling like commando. No, don't do that. Just put it safely, get your friend to do after your camera gear. You go down before you take your camera gear. Okay, expensive though. Okay, sometimes it's like a month of salary like, or more. Okay, so take care of your camera. So say, so I get this shot, I, I was shooting a sunrise there. I feel that it's not bad, it's quite nice to me. I, I'm using a desktop. Filter, a lean filter. To me, I think it's okay. Uh, no, this is without the filters. So I was thinking maybe I should create something that can move the images. So I, I was looking, uh, besides doing a sun ray, I think I want to do something else. So I just put in my filter. You see, there's actually a blue cast. Lee is famous for blue cast anyway. The blue was even very dark blue anyway. So this is actually what the, the shot that I captured with the pen stop. You can see that the movement. You feel, wow, this shot is nice straight away. Yeah, it didn't catch your attention. This is so so, uh, point and shoot also can use your handphone, also can do like this kind of images. Right, so what for you? You know, you spend so much time carrying all your gear there. You can do something different from a shot. Okay, so uh, the, the problem with this is that when you remove blue, everything changes. The color tone of the trees, everything starts to change. Anything that is blue is also reduced. Okay, because you're reducing the blue channel. Okay, so this is a disadvantage of using a lean sometimes. Uh, this is actually one of the example that I have uh, used. Uh, I was testing out, this is my first testing, my shot. Okay, first shot at Kigetera and Italy. I used a uh, lean big stopper. This is my usual one that I always get. Definitely get this kind of feel. They were thinking, oh, it's like that. Right? That means I have to spend a lot of time when I go and edit these images. I have to remove all the blue color cast. After I remove, it looks so pale, the images. 
right? So uh, then I, I borrowed immediately from the another instructor, Joseph Mark. Yeah, he's a Joseph, also a Joseph, but Joseph Mark. Okay, so he actually loaned me the uh, uh, pen stop. So I put it in. So I immediately use the same setting, I click. Then I said, eh, how come I got no filter? Eh, did I put a filter? I check. Eh, F A. Well, I got shocked immediately. What? Well, I said, hey, this is not bad then, actually, because you see what you see is what you get. I use my handphone and I said, same. Looks the same. Okay, so I, I was very impressed by this filter. So I tell Joseph, hey, okay, can you recommend me uh, to like do something uh, for them? So that like, I want to do more. Yeah? So I actually tested. So this is actually one of the shots. Exactly the same thing, just that you see, see before and after. Yeah, it's that like, you'll be like shocking. That meaning you will spend it, you will spend lesser time in your editing. Am I right? Because not everyone are doing Photoshop. So how? If you use this uh, you post online, uh, everybody say, hey, why you never edit? So I you no know, actually you can post straight away. Yeah, you can use any this. Or maybe you can increase a bit of the contrast, saturation, that's it. Yeah, you can use it straight away. Okay. So another one that I have is an unedited one, 1 over 200 second. Okay, so at 1 over 200, if you put in a 10 stop, I can have a 10 second shot like this. And not edited yet, it's not edited. So this is straight from camera. So I was like, wow, very fascinated by this filter. I've been using it again and again, and I've been shooting water instead of the, the entire scenes. Yeah, because I was so fascinated by it. You know, first time I had it like, oh, I don't need to edit. So I want to do something, all the uh, series of all the water series. So I was thinking to do all this. Okay, so I have did this recent, this is the most recent trick that I, I came back, the November trick. Okay, uh, 1 over 40 seconds, unedited. So this is the usual shot that you get. To me, I think not too bad, uh, this kind of shot. But then again, of course, you want it to be, you know, to look more drama. So I put in the six stop. So this is actually a six stop. Okay, where you still can see texture of water. Okay, if you're using a tank stop, uh, everything will be flat. Everything will be flat. So six stop at least you still can control because it's only a second. A second, you see, just by a second it makes a difference in your shot. Okay, so this is actually a six stop. I, I actually should this extend and use a six stop because it looks the same. So I put it up without looking, I put it in. Yeah, so I sh I shot, I saw the tank stop anyway. So I shot. Hey, how come uh, Beside me, Joseph Mark was telling me, I'm shooting a 30, 20 seconds. I said, how come my filter only one second? Something wrong with my setting. I checked and checked. No name. I checked my filter. Oh, I put six stops. I said, then it will be a bit. But I like the effect. In fact, yeah, I quite like it. After I put it in the next spot, I think it's flat. Okay, because everything you cannot see. Okay? Another one. Okay, this is actually one of the shots that usually people will like to be all special, so are nice. Okay, this is also one of them that I would love to do. But then again, I put in the same thing. I put in the, this is actually a dead stop. You can see that it's actually a misty effect. It has a misty effect, yeah? So it's very nice. It's not overexposed, because I checked on the exposure. It's not overexposed at any point, okay? And the shadow is nicely uh, lit as well. So this is actually a 50 second in the same kind of uh, lighting that you shot earlier. Okay, in the, that means in the daytime, you can see it's very bright. It's, a, it's a, actually in the afternoon. Ah, no, sorry, sorry, late morning. Okay, so you can see this kind of shot, it looks amazing. You post online, people say, wow, sweet, yeah, beautiful, and then they click like this kind of image, right? <laughs> so it's an optimal goal, I mean, like, I want to do it. Okay, so filters can actually make your photo looks really different. Okay, that's, that's why I say, you know, you have to do something different than what other people do. Okay, everybody can shoot this kind of shot. Anybody, any camera can do, point and shoot also can do, handful also can do. But then again, this is different. Okay? Same thing, unedited, the same thing, but you see how the crowd crowd me. Okay, the, then I use a six stop. Okay, so the, the, the six stop, the only good thing about the six stop is that you can see that the, the you can see texture on the water, but there's no movement on the crowd. Okay, so you have to choose which one you want. Okay, so either after you shoot this, you want movement on the cloud, right? You have to take up the six stop, okay, and then you put in the ten stop just for the, the cloud, and then you merge them together, blend them together to get the effects. Okay, because a lot of people say they use ten stop, but then they, when they look at them, they have a texture one. Because they actually they, they swap filter without telling you, of course I tell you ten stop. Yeah, straight away. But then again, they actually there's some technique to do it. Okay, this is actually a ten stop. Okay, so you see I swap to a ten stop of the club, but the water is very silky. So some people they like this kind of effect as 
well. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It's okay. It's acceptable. Uh, just that you see different different feel. Uh, the feel is different. Okay. This is very very soft. Everything so soft. At least this has uh, some texture. You can see movement. Okay, you know it's moving. Okay. So this is actually like a club. Okay. So this is actually one of the shots that I did many years back with a B plus W. Okay, it gives me a pink color cast, which sometimes it does have an advantage because it changes my sunrise. Okay, but then again, this was taken uh, what eight years back, uh, seven years or eight years back. We got one thousand D kit lens, so actually I stitch all the images up, five panel, a panel shot, five images, and I have uh, B plus W one one zero ten stop. So it has a pink color cast. So sometimes what we can do is, okay, in this sense over here. If let's say some people give you a blue color cast like this, so what I do is sometimes I will combine them. Okay, I want a blue sky, but I want a natural looking sea, sea like this. Okay, I will put in a ten stop lee for the cloud. I will get blue sky. Take it out again. I put another ten stop the nisi just for the ground, the bottom area where I have this shot. Yeah, you can combine them together as well. Okay, so now I, uh, I I see stack images like this. Okay, so doesn't mean it's, it's wrong. Sometimes by stacking, it does give you a very special effects, color effects in your shots. Okay, so this actually won me quite a number of awards uh, from 2011 when I started photography. Okay, so I actually make use of my filters again okay, to do fine art photography for architecture as well. So these are actually one of the shots that I'm using a tank stop, a tank stop. Just one single ten stop. This is actually a galaxy, the Canon building where they they are actually there currently. So I was there early, so I was thinking to do some shoot. So I put in a ten stop. Okay, actually this was caused by a sun ray. There's a beautiful sun ray coming in. Okay, so I actually diffuse away the sun ray by using a ten stop. So it creates a very soft look in my shot. Okay, which I'm able to do black and white, especially black and white. You need soft look. Okay, so. Uh, Put in another end stop for my dish shot as well. I saw a very beautiful lights coming in. Okay, so I immediately put in my end stop in. Okay, I captured in the the next sequence of images. Uh, I I not only captured just one end stop. I captured a series of end stop and also without filters and with filters. So I actually have a different technique. Then I combine them all together as one images. Okay, that that is how you and you can do. You can see another end stop that I created. Just at this Paya Lebar Square. Okay, I was there doing a commercial shoot. Then I was like, done with it. I come down. I said, wow, the light so nice, so beautiful. Immediately straight away at the post side, I will open my tripod, take out my filter, and set up. Immediately start shooting. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, just shoot whatever I can. I actually stack uh, uh, up to 16 stock. That means I stack a 10 stock and a 6 stock together. Okay, meaning you have to time really long because it's like 16 stock. Yeah, you can shoot like a mini or so or more sometimes. Okay, so I have to shoot for the clouds to get the cloud movement. Okay, because cloud is very important in my shot. Okay, then uh, I'm able to do that kind of shot. And luckily the lights actually shine, the light move. Okay, so in order to do this kind of shot, you have to look at lights, you have to study lights, how the lights move. Okay, because when, when there's sunlight, the clouds actually cover the sun sometimes. So it become like uh, no, no effects on the lights on the building. So I waited for the lights to come out again. Okay, so I capture as many lights as possible on my shot. Okay, so that's, that's how I do. This is also one of my shots that I won quite a number of awards recently for this shot, uh, for the black and white uh, category architecture. Uh, this was taken with the 16 stop as well. I stack in the 16 stop. So that's why 16 stop is something that's very useful. If you have a 3 stop a six, uh, and a 10 stop, you can combine them together as well. We have 13 stop. But EC will have this 15 stop as well. It, they, they actually sell us 15 stop. Which is uh, not many people buy because I can stack. So nobody buy. Okay. So uh, for myself, I, I, I don't buy because if, if they want they have to give it to me and not I buy it. <laughs> I'm reviewer, so I have to review. Yeah, so same thing, lighting. Okay, so this is kind of effect. Okay, so these are uh, pho photos that are unedited as well, straight from camera, everything straight from camera. Thanks for filters. Just to share with you uh, what I did in Italy. These are all taken in Italy. Okay, you can see that the, the, the misty effect is beautiful. Okay, you see this kind of effect where to find in Singapore? You know, you don't see this kind of effect. So you are so fascinated. I'm so fascinated by the filter. Okay, so I was like shooting and shooting, and Joseph, I keep 
look at me, what are you shooting man, show me, show me. Because he don't shoot this kind of stuff. So I'm a, I'm a guy who always shoot this. Okay, so I shot this. They say this is also a tank stop. Okay, I try to have texture in my water as much as possible. Okay, so uh, the, the setting, you have to set it accordingly. You can see this effect, this is actually a, a wave coming up, very high wave. Okay, so must be careful because it could like just... Again, you know, sometimes I was shooting certain shots, right? The start of the shot that you can see earlier, right? actually the water splashed over my camera. So, yeah, it's all seawater. But then I use my t-shirt to clean it, so it's okay. Okay, so I have to have it anyway. Okay, so, so this is um, the, the tank stop that I have. So this is actually uh, consists of the big wave, the big one. Then you have this kind of effects. If not, then you, you can't really see much effects. Okay, this is another tank stop, you can see. Wow, it's like that kind of silky effect. Okay, these are all taken in the, it's on the same place. I actually spent uh, two hours first to do this. Okay, the, the series. Okay, and you see, clean the horizon. Where do you find this in Singapore? Singapore can only find ships. Okay, so all your shots will have all the ships. So this is actually one of the shots that I really love it. Okay, another one, look like clouds. A lot of people thought that it's a mountain with a cloud. I said, no, it's a sea water. Okay, so they, they thought that it's actually uh, clocks. Okay, say so 10 stop. Okay, why all 10 stop? Because I only use 10 stop that time. I don't have 6 stop at that time. So all 10 stop. You can see, a 10 stop earlier, I have one angle. This is actually from another angle which is at the top. I actually went up all the way. Nobody went up because nobody knows there's a. Because I'm shooting from a cemetery. Yeah, I guess nobody then go these kind of places to shoot. Okay, because behind me are all the, you know, the, the, the tombs are all behind me. So I'm just shooting in front. I was like, oh, okay, uh, sorry, uh, excuse me. Uh, then I keep shooting. <laughs> so this, that's why I got a, a nice shot here. Uh, this is also a very nice shot that I have for a 10 stop. Then I convert it to black and white. You can see that the effect after, before, and after I convert to black and white. You can see that it does make a, a, a very much different, you know, that, that shot that you have. Okay, you can see before, it's uh, still nice, of course the colour is nice as well. But I want to make it more drama, I switch to black and white. If you have enough of black and white, you can actually you can, you can make a very nice black and white photograph like this. Okay, and these are edited photographs that I have. Okay, uh, it was combined with uh, a number of shots. Okay, my, my highest uh, combination of, of Photoshop, uh, I can combine up to 40 images in one, 40 to 50 images, depending on the shot that I shoot. Okay, like this kind of shot, uh, it looks like very simple, but actually it's not as simple because after you shoot the 30 seconds, for example, here is overexposed somehow. Okay, if you shoot 20 seconds, here not enough light. So, huh? Okay, so if, okay, of course you can do Photoshop, uh, but for me, I feel that I want it to get the correct exposure on my individual shot first because I can minimize my noise. Because if you go and open up the shadow, meaning you, you are actually introducing a lot of noise in the shot. Okay, so I'm trying to minimize noise. Okay, so I have to combine a lot of images in. This is actually another shot that I have, you can see why so many the similar thing. Okay, uh, because we went two times, two days in a row, the same shot, the same place. That was taken in April. Uh, some shot was taken in November, so this was taken in April. So I tried the same thing and stop filter, silky effects. Okay, and then I put in, I blend the individual light into the shot. Yeah, so I spend a lot of my shot usually when I process my images, minimum uh, I will spend at least two to three hours just for one shot, minimum, a simple one. Okay, my highest record that I spend in my Photoshop for my commercial is 80 hours. I spent 80 hours sitting on my computer for days, days and night. Yeah, just to complete one shot. Okay, so this is how intensive yeah, I will go into. Okay, this is actually one, uh, one of the shots that I did for one of the lessons for my student. So I actually use a Nisi 6 stop combined with a uh, GND 3 stop soft with an overall 6 stop. Okay, this is actually a Vivo City. Uh, sometimes you can capture very beautiful uh, sunrise over there, but currently now it's under renovation. This is this portion. Yeah, so don't do it for now. Okay, this is one shot that uh, earlier I showed I said that I spent like 40 images. Yeah, this is actually one of them. I, I actually took 40 images just to do this with a uh, uh, GND 3 stop. 
for this shop. Okay, so you can see this. If you go yourself, if you look at the place, you will see that everything that you shoot is all black most of the time. Because over here, if you take care of the sunrise or sunset, this is actually sunset. So if you shoot, you can meter the sky. If you put in the filter, everything here will be black. Guarantee, guarantee all black. Okay, or if not, you can only see a very, uh, very slight lighting that will light up the area. So, so in this case, I actually have a, a, I shoot in all bracketing, so I have all the exposure for the entire scene. Even the black, I have a, I have something that is bright, you know, for me to combine. Yeah, so I actually mask everything into it. Okay. So you meter the still meter the light. Yes, I I still look out for the light because this is the most important one. Yes. Then after I'm done with the sky here, the rest I shoot by bracketing. Then I combine. You add a three stop. Yeah, I add a three stop. Soft. Okay, so after I got my sky in, then the rest at the bottom here, I take care by doing Photoshop editing to bring back. Because I have all the shot like underexposed, like all the black stone, all the, all the rock, right? I actually have a, bra uh, a bracket where it's bright. Let's say plus one, plus two is good enough to use maybe for here, for here, for here. You can light up, you combine them together manually. Not HDR, you don't use HDR combined because the color is going to look awful. Okay, nowadays uh, HDR is no longer in trend. It is a trend, HDR. Don't use HDR. Okay, your images are for first look, it looks fantastic to yourself. After the second night, uh, you open again and it looks like uh, okay only. The third night, you open it, uh, wow, you know, you start to look back. Yeah, HDR is not uh, a good way to go. This is another shot that I have. Uh, end stop filters. This is using an end stop. Okay, so what happens is that this rock here, this is done recently in the November tree. This rock here is all black, totally black, no light. There's no light because when the sun coming coming from the right, here everything is black. Okay, because there's not light, not light to fall. So if I go meter the building or I meter the sky, here is also black, no matter how. Okay, so what I do is that I shot separately the sky, one shot, the building, multiple shot, and I combine them together. Yeah, manually, for the shot. Photoshop in everything. Okay, so you can see the color vibrancy is different as well compared to those in the in the beginning. They are all the uneditable. So these are all uneditable. Is it looks so much different in okay, the shot? And this is actually uh, another shot that I did, uh, like the one that I told you that I checked up with my camera bag, almost peeled. Okay, I go up all the way up. I said, wow, well, luckily the view is so nice. If not, wow, well, waste my waste my time. So this was taken with a ten stop. Okay, what happened is that. We went out, it's actually very cloudy. It's green, it's going to rain. So I was thinking, what, this big chunk of cloud covering the entire scene looks so ugly. So I was thinking myself, uh, telling myself, what should I do? Okay, because the light condition is not good because it's going to rain. So it's very tricky to shoot this kind of condition. So uh, what I do is, uh, I did take out my tennis stop. I put, I saw the sky change, the color start to change in it. There's no time to waste. Immediately set up the tennis stop first, put it in. Okay, but before I put in, I actually do a, a test shot. I do a multiple, that means I'll do a practicing shot first and without the filter. So I shot all the exposure, all the plus side shot, everything I shoot earlier. Okay, then I put in my filter. Then I meter for the sky. Everything for the sky will be without even looking at the light here. Okay, then the, when, when it gets darker, like for example 7, 30 onward, then, then the light is on. Before that, the, there's no light. It's all like uh, natural color. Then I shoot another one, I took out my filter, I shoot everything just for the building. Without ignoring the sky, because the sky is already gone, nothing in it. It's all black. So only left with lights on the buildings. So I shoot, I meter, I shoot everything just for the building. I waited. I'm hoping for more lights here, but unfortunately, no. I waited for almost two hours, nothing. So I waited, waited, nothing. Okay, so forget it. Keep go. Okay, so I, I really have in mind how I'm going to process it anyway. Okay, so every time when you shoot anything, you have to have in mind how are you going to process it in order to create your images. That's that's how I usually what I usually do for my images. In my mind you must know what you want to do first. Okay, then you will start to combine them together. Then it's easier for you to, to make it surely right. Okay, in a short. Okay, so this is actually my last slide. Okay, this is actually the example of the splashes coming to my camera. 
Okay, you can see, imagine this water, everything is all on my camera and wet. Everything wet. Okay, but I'm using DC, remember, waterproof. But not my camera. So it's all wet. My camera is covered with the, the sea water, but except the, the lens, the front is okay. Okay, so yeah, you have to be very careful. Don't jump away because the the, the you know the sea coming out, then this kind of wave, right? Some of them they're going to jump. Because it's quite bad. I'm standing maybe around this height. There's a, there's a ledge of this height. I was standing there, very narrow. So I see some people they jump. Don't ever jump because it's very dangerous. Your camera is in your hand. Don't jump. Okay, this is very important. You might slip and fall. Okay, so just let it be. Just let it, you know the water. Some lesson is good, anyway. So say bless I me. Mean, okay, then you should be able to take nicer photo later. Okay, so okay. Uh, this as mentioned, this is actually you can use a camera and shoot. Okay, your your phone shoot. Okay, these are where you can buy all your gears. Uh, the the DC filters. Okay, Peter, this small small one is actually the main distributor, but very small. Sorry, because I, I didn't know they're so small. So uh, this is where the Pagoda Street is. This many department store. There's too many here, so make sure you go to the right one. It's a 24 Pandora Street. Okay, you just mentioned to him, yeah, uh, yeah, for Joseph Go, uh, he introduced you. So usually they will give you a something special, maybe I don't know. I'm asking. Okay, he will give you. Uh, I heard of my students say not bad, the price is quite good. Okay, because he caught a lot of them, so he I think he give a very good rate, especially. But keep a secret to yourself, uh, okay? If you have a good rate, don't get tell everybody. Okay. Because uh, they are also distributed in the market they are selling. So that's why we are trying to keep it, uh, yeah, not, to, not to tell them uh, that we are giving special rate as well. Okay. So, uh, so China Park, okay, that's two, uh, so make sure you go to 24. Okay, so uh, any question you want to ask me about filters and stuff, shootings, anything, any question for me? Yes. Uh, let's skip right. You say using packaging, so you've done packaging without the filters first? Yes, I, I do without filters, uh, most of the time without filters. Bracketing with filters is a bit challenging, you can do, yes. Just that you have time. For example, the ideal shot is 30 seconds. So you want a plus one, maybe you say, okay, 40 seconds, plus one, 50 seconds, 60 seconds. So you have a plus one, plus two, plus three. So you want minus. So you minus off from there. That's 30, you become 20, 10 seconds, 5 seconds. So this is what I do as well for filters, if I want to do bracketing. But in most cases, when I do bracketing, I don't do uh, filters. I'll take it out. Okay? But remember, when you put in filters, always remember that you have to switch to MF focusing before you okay, focus. Make sure that you focus already. You have sound, beeping sound or focus. Okay? Then you switch to MF before you put in your filter. Because if you put in a 10 stop filter, the camera starts to hunt. Okay? Don't, later you shoot it. Say, oh, my picture all blur because of the oil, you cannot shoot. You click, 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 how come your camera cannot click? Okay, because it starts to hunt, they cannot focus. So, you always remember after you put in your filter, switch to manual focus. Okay, then you can start shooting. If you don't, then sorry, the images will be all blur. Okay, but six stop sometimes in daytime, uh, you do not need to switch to M MF manual focus, but I would recommend you to do an MF manual focus. Who knows the, the, the start time you went off? Yeah, then after that, your, your lenses start to focus without you knowing. Then after that, the sun comes again, you continue shooting without you knowing. Yeah, so anything could be sharp, not sharp. So it's best that you focus. Usually, I have a beeping sound. I'll turn on the beeping sound to make sure that it's sharp. Because I trust my camera that it's focused. Okay, because to be frank, now we are getting older and older. You know, it's so difficult to check whether it's sharp or not sharp. Trust your camera. Since it's made with a beeping sound, you have to a lot of them, I tell them, want the beeping sound? Huh? Amateur then. I say, you want your photo to look amateur or yourself to look amateur? Do you get it? So you make sure that, you know, even I'm a professional photographer, I shoot architecture in here with the beeping sound. My client, they are fine with it. You get it. At the end of the day, it's the result of the images that give them a more factor. Okay, it's not about whether you do beeping sound. Yeah, people will laugh at you somehow, yes. Yeah, so for those people who are only know uh, the top but don't know the shoot, they will laugh at you. Okay, so, but then again, I would recommend you to have a big sound. No matter how, I shoot macro everything before we big sound. Okay, yeah, anything else? Ask me. When you do your second, yes. Garden by the way, yes. Those trees are basically with the shaking. Yes, so I will have uh, uh, one of the images which is a very high shutter speed to, to freeze, yeah, to freeze it. 
Uh, usually, well, I will have either that or a bit of soft is okay, right, to be fair. Understood, understood, because you're shooting filters. Yeah, it's no light condition, it's understood. That, we will, we will not penalize our judges, we will not based on that, that case. The, the whether is it uh, whether is it blur or not sharp or not. Most importantly, it's only subject have to be sharp. Three definitely move somehow, no matter how. Okay, and if you shoot in higher shutter speed, you can do that. I sometimes what I do is I pump up my eyes so slightly higher just for the tree. So I blend the tree in. Yeah, using the same exposure because if you shoot a high shutter speed or you shoot a low shutter speed, the exposure if you shoot in EV mode, it will be the same. Okay, so you, you just use that freeze one to, for that corner. I'll mask in the tree itself, just for that. Okay. So for the yes. part that you say is faster, Yes, very dark. Do you just up and move the, the, the shutter speed or do you just pick up? No, I take out the filters. Yeah, I take out the filters because my, my light has, my filter is a bit clouded up to here. My filter. So the rest, I just take it out and just shoot bracketing. Yeah, just to get that, that, that shot for that rocks. And it happened that there are uh, a nice light coming in here, I don't know why. I saw a lead up on this rock. I think there's a street lamp or something, they, they will lead up the rock for a certain timing only. After a while gone. Then the, the, when the, the sky gets dark, the, no more lights. Yeah, so if you want to get the lights there, you have to be there very early. So I combine, okay, okay, this is only 40 shot. I, this 40 shot is com consists of from let's say 70, uh, no, 6 30 or 6 o'clock all the way all the way uh, until uh, 8 plus. Meaning my shutter is like a whole day I'll be shooting the same thing without moving anything. Because sometimes you can choose, you can have some uh, exposure, the uh, lighting. Sometimes if you go like purple, you can wait. The later part is they will change the color, the red. So you wait for the red. Then you can actually choose the color. I have actually a library of images of the entire scene. Then I mix and match the later part to make it look beautiful. Yeah, so this is what I usually do. Shoot as a template, as a as a library of images, then you mix and match everything in. So meaning you have to go and learn a very good masking Photoshop skill. You must learn the basic at least to learn about masking. Because in order to do all these are uh, in late to know masking. Masking is the basic you need to know. Yeah, because uh, a lot of people uh, they told me that they know Photoshop, but they use all auto, auto, tone, auto, what color, everything auto. I said that it's not Photoshop, you don't know Photoshop, okay? Because if you use all the auto, they will just anyhow you know, give you a color. Then suddenly you put auto tone, you know what color? What happens that the, the color, the green uh, becomes blue, bluish color, orangeish color. Yeah, so everything auto doesn't work. Okay, so this is actually uh, for Photoshop. Of course, Lightroom, you can do uh, the overall adjustment. Photoshop is basically on individual small detail. So you must see what you want to do. What, what you want to do. For me, Photoshop, because I will never use Lightroom because I cannot control the individual spot that I want. So I prefer Photoshop itself. Yeah. Anything else for the last one? Any question? Good. So as landscape photography is concerned, yes. this is sort of part and parcel. Yes, this is a yeah, must because okay, photography has evolved since a digital era has came in. So we essentially evolved, everything evolved. Now I have a student, what happened is that she attended my lesson in Photoshop. She was telling me she, uh, why she attended my lesson, because she go to the lab and tell the lab, hey, can you help me uh, brighten the rock? Uh? Then you know the lab say, huh? You want me to brighten the rock? This is you have to do it yourself, you know, because this is not film. Because when you shoot film, you can do dot and burn in the lab, they will do for you. No problem if you're doing film. But now it's digital. Digital meaning you have to do it everything yourself. Yeah, that's why the invention of Photoshop is there. Yeah, because actually Photoshop itself has been there for so many years, but nobody uses it. Yeah, only the lab people they, they sometimes they use it. Myself, I've been using uh, since just like Adobe. No, uh, just Photoshop itself. They call Photoshop without the CC, without anything. That, that's the time where I use uh, without even layer. Yeah, so I've been using Photoshop, but I actually uh, everything is self-taught anyway. So everything. What I see, what you see here is all self-taught. I learn myself, then I share. Okay, what I learn. Okay, so I share all my all my skill up to the you know, those who came to my class. Yeah. Okay. So another question for me. No. 
Okay, so if yeah, yes. 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 Okay. So this is actually a very common uh, problem. Uh, problem. I should call it a problem. Okay, because a lot of people are asking me uh, now. I'm here. So what? What will you be using since I'm here? Okay. So anything that is to me that sun, the bright sun, you can use a just a ten thousand problem. Because then, if you, uh, with a telescope. You can shoot up to 30 seconds. Okay, but when you use a six stop, it is when the light is low, low light, which you think that uh, I don't think I can shoot like within the 30 second. Or I don't want to shoot bubble. You know, sometimes it's very difficult for a beginner to use bubble to shoot. You don't know how to buy. Okay, so what happens is that you try to minimize everything, you shoot at F8, ISO 200, for example, you can you can cut down the exposure time. But you still can use six stop or okay for for six stop you can use straight rate F16 because you want it longer, you can drag longer. Okay, in this case. So in, in ten stop you're using, you're afraid that it's too long or not enough time, not enough exposure time. So you can straight away switch to F11 or F8 in order to cut down two, three stop or four stop. Yeah, so that you can still capture it within the 30 second frame. Yeah, so that's what I usually do uh, I mean for beginners. That's how I do it so the last time when I started with filters. Then then after that you start to explore further, more more and more, longer exposure means you are more confident what your filter can do for you. Yeah, after a few rounds, after at least you shoot every day, a month and you're very good with filters. Because you already know what can be done, what cannot be done in the filters. Okay, and what time you can use, what time you can you will know one definitely. Because you put it in and you shoot anything black means cannot use up. Correct. Right? So you take it out, straight away you put a six stop. You shoot all black means cannot use filter anymore. Yeah. Exactly right. So, so you just take it out and then you still can do the 30 second because you know it's dark enough. You don't even need the filter. So what happens is that if you're shooting F8, still not enough, you cannot see anything, switch to take, it, take out a filter, switch to F16 and shoot as a normal, as per normal. You are able to still uh, capture it as a long exposure of 30 second, at least 20 to 30 second. Yeah. Okay, any more questions you want to ask me? Please. Yes. The stop and stop is no lighting. No, no lightning. Make sure that you cover it nicely. Make sure that your filters cover from top to bottom nicely. There's no lightning at all. I'm using a toner where the toner is important. Huh? There's no lightning at all. Okay, whatever you see is what you get. I don't even see light again. Okay, unless you I accidentally shift too high, then there's a there's a gap here. Yes. But this kind of this model uh, so far very good. No lightning at all. It covers nicely. You see the, the back, you don't even see any any hole at the back. No, no lighting at all. That's why it's so highly recommended. Yeah. Anybody who uses DC, uh, is, they praise like no one. Even Google or DC, everybody praise like you no know, review is so high. Yeah. So it's like that's why uh, everybody are now dashing into this. Yeah. You can try. You can if you are unsure, you can buy one piece and try. But of course, if you buy one piece, you need to buy the holder because it doesn't fit other holder. It might be loose. In other order, because of the, the, the making of it is different, the, the back. Okay, because my B and DC couldn't fit well. Yeah, so might have some problem because there's a lightning for Lee. I put Lee in, I got lightning. Because the, the design is different. Okay, that's why, you have to, that's why uh, they design differently uh, so that you can buy the folder as well. So the folder is good, then you buy, buy this folder. Invest one time, that's it. Take care of it. Okay, so for the distributor, I earlier mentioned, uh, those distributors that you'll be buying, from they carry a five year warranty. Uh. If you go and buy from other company, like for example PK Photos or, or any other company, they do not carry a five year warranty, they use only an in house one year warranty for themselves because they parent and bought. Okay, that means if you bring the receipt uh, go to Nisi there and tell them I'm going to Peter and tell me, hey Peter, my thing spoiled up. We will see uh, this other company uh, that's it. They will give it warranty you. Okay, that means anything because mechanism uh, sometimes you don't know whether it will drop or not. So now that you drop, you still go back, you will do something for you. Okay, because anything, these are all like full. Sometimes you accidentally, you know, damage it, you know, at least it can help you to solve an issue. Yeah, so of course, with uh, the, I heard uh, the diff, no, not much of a difference anyway, the pricing. So of course, fire warranty is better, right? And uh, one, one year warranty. Yeah, okay, anything you want to ask me before I call it a day? Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.